In this video, we'll explain the powerful new Remote Player feature in Media Master 6. The Remote Player allows users to control one or multiple media servers from any computer connected to your network. Control multi-room setups or multi-server shows from one place. You can also prepare media and queue lists offline, connect to the network, and send out the media to all networked players at once. You can also run the Remote Player on a machine that's already running Media Master. And best of all, the machine running the remote player doesn't need to have a license. Before starting the remote player, be sure that all players on the network are set up locally. Start by setting Media Master 6 to Player Mode in the Application tab of the Preferences window. This will restart Media Master and launch it in Player Mode. Next, open the hub and set it to Remote Player Mode. The remote player window is divided into three major sections. The Player Control section, the Queue Properties section, and the Layer Properties section. In the Player Control section, we can add Media Master players, create new queue lists, and access the transport controls. In addition to the standard transport controls, there are Jump to Final 15 Seconds and Jump to Final 30 Seconds buttons. These will jump to the last 15 or 30 seconds of the currently playing queue. The elapsed and remaining time of the currently playing queue are shown here as well. In the Queue Properties section, we can set the queue duration, the post play action, transition duration and type, and give the queue a name and color. We'll discuss these parameters in detail later on. Expand the Queue Properties sections to see the layers that are used in this queue. You'll see a thumbnail of each layer and the player that it's assigned to. When you select a layer, the layer properties become visible. Here's where you will select your visual and define its various behaviors and parameters. We'll cover these options in detail shortly as well. With the Switch Orientation button, you can decide if you want the Layer Properties section to be displayed on the bottom or to the right-hand side of the window. Let's begin by creating a new queue list. Next, we'll need to add a Media Master player by clicking the Add Player button. Select a player from the list, click OK, and the player will be added. When a player is selected, you can see its name and IP address in the Queue Properties section below. You can also command the player to enter or leave full screen or to restart the player. Now let's create a queue by clicking the Add Queue button. A new queue will be added at the end of the queue list. Keep organized by naming and adding a custom color to your queues. You can also click this zone to trigger the queue. To add a visual to a queue layer, Select the Layer Preview window. Be sure that the Visuals tab is active in the Layer Properties section. Highlight a folder and choose a visual from the available media. By default, each queue has one layer per player connected. To add additional layers, click the Add Layer button and remove layers by clicking the Delete Layer button. Connect media to the additional layers by using the same process. Select the Layer Preview window, highlight a folder, and select a visual from the available media. When you add a visual to a layer in your queue, the duration will be set to the length of that visual, but you can of course specify duration manually. The action function will define what happens when the queue has finished. By default, it's set to follow, but you can set it to pause, stop, jump, or hold. When set to follow, the next queue will play immediately. When set to pause, the queue list will pause and you'll have to manually click play to advance to the next queue. When set to stop, the queue list will stop. If you then click play, it will start from the first queue. When set to jump, it will advance to the queue that is specified in the jump to setting. You can loop the queue a specified number of times before jumping with the loop count. When set to hold, the queue list will keep looping and wait for a play or next command to advance to the next queue. With the transition time setting, you can define the duration of your transition or keep it set to zero if you don't want to transition at all. The type setting defines which transition will be applied. You have the choice between a crossfade, fade down, or fade up. You can delete the queue with the trash can button and, as already mentioned, a button with which you can expand or collapse the queue window. Let's explore the layer properties in depth. The first tab shows you the visuals you have available in your library. If you only want to see the folders that contain files, you can click the Show Files Only button. If you would prefer to see all folders, click the Show Empty Folder button. 
The second tab lets us define the loop behavior of the visual. By default, this is set to loop. This means that the visual will loop during the queue duration time. When you select loop forever, the visual will continue playing even when the queue is finished and the next queue has started. It can be stopped by starting a new visual on that layer or by stopping the queue. You can also choose Run Once in Black or Run Once in Transparent, which will play the visual once and then go to Black or Transparent, as the name suggests. The next tab is the Effects tab, where you can add an effect to your visual. If an effect has parameters that you can modify, they will become visible as you select the effect. You can copy effects parameters from one layer to another with the Copy and Paste buttons. Next, you have the Colors tab. Here you can modify the hue, saturation, value, red, green, blue, brightness and contrast values of your visual, and you can even invert them. There is a preview window that displays the result of any changes in real time. If you want to undo these changes, you can always click the Restore Default button in the toolbar. The Position tab makes it possible to change the width and height of your visual, define the X and Y position of the upper left corner, and specify the tiling. You can also simply grab the visuals and position it where you want in your output. In the Mixing tab, we can select how the visuals are mixed together. By default, the Replace option is selected, but you can also choose Addition. And finally, we come to the Output tab that lets us specify on which output or surface to show the visual. Note that the configuration of the output happens on the player itself as usual using the Video Mapper from Media Master Pro users or Instant Mode. To control the remote player using Telnet or Artnet, you'll need to configure the Remote Command Service in the Preferences window. You also need to enable the service by marking the checkbox and selecting the correct IP address to listen to. With the Control Mapping function, you can map all of the mappable controls from the remote player to a MIDI controller, Artnet, your keyboard, or get Telnet commands. To control the remote player through Artnet, you should set the correct universe and channel here, then activate it by checking the Activate checkbox. To map a control to a keyboard button, first select the control you'd like to map in the list in the left column, then click the Learn button and push a button on your keyboard. The character of your keyboard will be displayed and the mapping will be activated. Again, if at any point you want to deactivate the mapping, then you can simply uncheck the Activate checkbox. To control the remote player through Telnet, You'll first select the control, and then click the command that is shown to copy it to the clipboard. You can then paste into your Telnet application. If you're an Elgato Stream Deck user, you can find a dedicated companion plugin on the companion website or on the Archaeos download page. To export the queue list, click the Export button. That will open a browser window that lets you select a location and name for your queue list. To import a queue list, click the Import button Navigate to your queue list and click Open. 